Good morning, class. So for your second module, we're going to tackle about your kinematics, your uniformly accelerated motion. Uniformly accelerated motion. So we have the following terms. I'm going to discuss here the first term, kinematics, that is actually a science or part of mechanics that deals with the description of your motion. Speed now is the scalar quantity, the distance traveled divided by time. Okay. The average speed now pertains to the distance covered all over your time that is taken. Okay. In variables, that is d all over t. For your velocity, your velocity is the vector quantity that describes a body's speed and direction of motion at any time t. When we say velocity, that is the speed plus the direction of that speed, okay? making your velocity as your vector quantity. Average velocity now is the vector quantity where the x component is the change in x divided by the time interval. Hence, that is actually your delta x is the distance as well all over your delta t or your change in time. Okay? In calculus term, that is differential of your x or differential of your distance all over the differential of your t or the differential of your time. Instantaneous velocity. That is the limit of the average velocity as the time interval approaches zero. It equals to the instantaneous rate of change of position with time, it measures how fast and in what direction it is moving. In calculus term, your V now would be equal to the limit of your change in time as approaches to zero, or that is delta x all over delta t, or in calculus that is, again, the differential of your x or the differential of the distance all over the differential of your t or the differential of your time. Acceleration now measures the time rate of your change of velocity. So acceleration, this is actually the change of your velocity all over per unit time. Okay, Average acceleration, that is the vector quantity whose x component is delta v, the change in velocity divided by the in time interval. Okay, We have your Average acceleration as A av is equal to your delta V or your change in velocity all over your change in delta T. Instantaneous acceleration. From your calculus, it is equal to the instantaneous rate of change in velocity with time. Your A now or your instantaneous acceleration can be expressed in calculus as your limit. You have your equation delta V all over delta T as your change in time approaches to zero gives us your differential in velocity all over differential of your t or differential time. Okay. So we have your motion with constant acceleration. We have the following formulas. Your Vf is equal to Vi plus the product of your at. Your d now is equal to your initial velocity times your time plus the half of your acceleration Multiply it with time squared. So we have this one. Okay, I'm going to highlight that. Your Vf squared is equal to Vi squared plus 2ad. Or your final velocity squared is equal to your initial velocity plus twice the product of your acceleration and distance. And we have this following. We have your um, distance in, x, in terms of x. Okay, x minus x of o is equal to VO plus V all over 2 times time, okay? Again, to express now those um, variables, we have the following. We have your initial velocity for VI, final velocity for your VF, variable VF. V, VF pertains to your average velocity. Okay? And then we have your D as your distance displacement. And then we have your T as your time elapsed. Okay. The following, please be guided with the um, units of those variables respectively, which can be expressed as MKS, CGS, and FPS. Your MKS pertains to meters, your K, kilograms, 
and your S in seconds, and then your CGS as centimeters, G for grams, S for seconds, and FPS as for foot, pound, and seconds, okay? So let's proceed with the examples. For your first example, an airplane accelerates down a runway at 3.20 meters per second squared for 32.8 seconds until it finally lifts off the ground. Determine the distance traveled before the takeoff. Okay? So we are given with the following. We have your acceleration as positive 3.20 two meters per second squared. Why is it positive? Because it started at rest, okay? Although it is not stated directly on the problem, but if you're going to analyze it before takeoff, when we say before takeoff, your initial velocity is at rest or VI is equal to zero meters per second. That makes it a positive acceleration. Why? 32.20 minus zero meters per second and then the distance that has been traveled gives us a positive acceleration. And then the 32.8 seconds here pertains to your time. Okay? So we are going to determine now the distance traveled before takeoff okay? or your variable D. That is the unknown for this problem. So we're going to use this formula, your distance formula for your physics speed. D is equal to Initial velocity, multiply it with time, plus the sum of the half of your acceleration and time squared. Substituting now your va va values gives us zero meters per second. Multiply it with your time as 32.8 seconds, plus the half of your acceleration, 3.20 meters per second squared, and multiply it with your time as 32.8 seconds squared. Gives us your distance at almost 2,000 meters. For your second problem, okay, a car starts from rest and accelerates uniformly over a time of 5.21 seconds for a distance of 110 meters. Determine now the acceleration of the car. Okay? So the car starts from rest. When we say rest, initially, your velocity would be equal to your zero okay, meters per second value. And then we have your 5.21 seconds here as your time. Okay, Then the distance that is 110 meters. So your unknown variable here is your acceleration. To solve now for your acceleration, we're going to use this formula. Okay, D is equal to your initial velocity times your time plus half of your acceleration times your time squared. Substitute now the following values gives us 110 meters equated to the following terms. Okay? Zero meters per second, multiply it with 5.21 second plus half of your unknown variable acceleration, multiply it with your time squared at 50 at 5.21 second. Okay? So defining the whole equation gives us 110 meters is equal to 13.57 seconds squared. Multiply it with your acceleration. Now to eliminate this variable 13.57 seconds squared. So we have to divide both sides of equation with this value, okay? Leaving out your unknown variable A on the right side of your on the left side of your equation, A is equal to 110 meters per 13.57 seconds squared. Gives us your acceleration at 8.10 meters per second squared. For your third example, a race car accelerates uniformly from 18.5 meters per second to 46.1 meters per second in 2.47 seconds. Determine the acceleration of the car and the distance traveled. Okay, so a race car accelerates uniformly from 18.5 meters per second. So this one is your initial velocity to 46.1 meters per second. This is your final velocity. And then that 2.47 seconds value here pertains to your time covered to get this 
following values for your velocities. Okay. To solve now for your acceleration, okay. your acceleration now is equal to delta V all over your time. Delta V pertains to the change of your velocity or final velocity minus your initial velocity at 46.1 meters per second minus 18.5 meters per second divided by the time given at 2.47 seconds. Okay. Gives us your acceleration value at 11.2 meters per second squared. Now, your distance would be calculated with this formula. Okay, substitute the following values. Gives us your initial velocity. Multiply it with your time plus half of your ac solved acceleration at 11.2 meters per second squared. Multiply it with your time, 2.47 seconds quantity squared. Okay, gives us your distance at almost 80 meters. For your fourth example, a rocket powered sleds are used to test a human is to test the human response to acceleration. If a rocket powered sled is accelerated to a speed 444 meters per second in 1.83 seconds, okay, then what is the acceleration and what is the distance that the sled travels? Okay. So we are not given with the initial velocity, but your rocket powered sleds were accelerated to a speed of 444 meters per second. This one is your final velocity. Okay. Now, your initial velocity, we're going to assume it at rest. Okay. So VI now is zero meters per second. And then your time here, 1.83 seconds. Okay. To solve now for your acceleration, we're going to use this formula. A is equal to delta V all over your time, 444 meters per second minus zero meters per second all over your time at 1.83 seconds. Okay. Giving us your acceleration, 243 meters per second squared. Now for your distance, we're going to use again this formula. Substituting the following values okay, gives us your distance to 406 meters. Now to solve for your last example or your fifth example, a bike accelerates uniformly from rest to a speed of set. 7.10 meters per second over a distance of 35.4 meters. Determine the acceleration of the bike. Okay? We are given with the following as your initial velocity, zero meters per second. Okay? That is from rest. Your final velocity as 7.10 meters per second. And then the distance that is 35.4 meters. We're going to find now for your acceleration. Okay? So we are limited with the following variables, three var variables. So to solve now for your acceleration, we're going to use this formula. Okay? Vf squared is equal to vi squared plus twice of your ad. Substituting now the values gives us 7.10 meters per second per second quantity squared equal to your zero meters per second quantity squared times plus two or twice of your unknown variable acceleration, multiply it with the distance. Okay? Simplifying now the whole terms gives us your acceleration at 0 0.712 meters per second squared. Okay? So that ends my presentation for kinematics or your uniformly accelerated motion.